Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my buddy Will, aka Prison Mike. Today we're gonna do a quick install with some X Bright RGB rock lights for the Neon Gladiator. Um, this kit came with eight of these LED lights that you can control and change the color with the app. And uh, Will's gonna help me mount them because that's gonna be the hardest part. Really, it's not a not a hard install. Hardest part is figuring out the locations and running the wires. So. For now, we're going to pick up the mounting locations and get it wired. Okay, so you already saw in the intro, we had the lights lit up because we just quickly connected to our auxiliary switch wiring, which comes factory from Jeep. Right here, we've got four, four, four wires. We chose to go to auxiliary four, um, which is this one here. So we, we just kind of did a quick uh, connection so we could test the lights, okay? Um, now we've already kind of picked our first location up in the wheel well here and uh, we're getting ready We're gonna mount up the pod. So we're gonna take this first pod which X Sprite is nice enough to give you a little rubber mount and the light and uh, The screws that are gonna go through here So once we pick our exact spot We're gonna drill a couple little holes to put the screws through and then it's just a matter of running the wire up to Here and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll go to the passenger side and we'll try to get that one to match up as best as possible. And drill this one hole and then we can kind of see how it feels. So. so that's the hole that the wire is going to go through. We're going to feed the wire then through that hole here. There we go. And then I'm going to try to feed it up through to Will up top. There you go. Woo! Tickle tickle! Well then, you got it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grab your finger. Okay, keep going, keep going. So the light will go right there. And now we just got to drill the two little holes for the, um, for the bolts to go through. The cord will rest in one of these notches. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so nope. we, we kinda, yeah, we kind of struggled with that when we first yeah. opened it. It's a good thing to point out because yeah, we were trying to figure out how the wire is supposed to lay in there, and uh, we'll finally figured it out. So it's good to point out there. Yeah. I'm gonna try to carefully come through with the washer first. Okay, now try not to move. Okay, so that's pretty snug. Here's the other one. I say we test test yeah, it to see. Up. And these have a specific way of going together too. So this is the harness going to the control box. This is the wire that goes to the light. You can see there's a notch here. So you can see the notch there that Will was talking about. And then there's a corresponding notch on the female end here. It's really hard to see and it's kind of hard to see even not through a camera. Don't force it. Just make sure you're lining everything up and then you'll know it once it goes on and then you've got these little screw tops that secure it on there. Make it waterproof. So what we're gonna do, Kim, now that we've got the uh, first one just kind of test fitted and mounted in there, we're gonna reconnect and make sure we're happy with the placement of the light and how it's reflecting in the wheel well. Then we're gonna kill the lights and turn these on so we can see how they glow. Um, oh, there we go, yeah. All right, looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way this first one looks with the light <laughs> shining down, but, you look <laughs> but I'm afraid that cars driving by are gonna be blinded, so I don't know about that first spot. We checked our first mounting location, and although we like the way that the lights light up underneath the vehicle, it's pointing too straight out, so with how tall this is, when a car, if a car was next to us at a light, it'd be shining like right in their window in their eyes. So we're gonna move it just from like this angle up like this a little bit more, so it's shining more straight down. Yeah, this light placement looks so killer. I like it. You should put a disclaimer at the bottom of this. This video could cause seizures. Yeah, that looks amazing. Blue looks good. So they you changed the like location, you guys, there. on here. No, and good. I'm not sure if we showed this, but this is a much better location. It's not gonna distract other oncoming traffic. This location, a little further forward, proved to be the best spot because it actually lights up the suspension a lot better, the tire, and it's not blinding traffic, so. That, that turned out to be an awesome spot, and we're gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. 
Yeah, so once again, let us mess up first and then you can watch the video and do it right. Yeah. <laughs> so the bolt that holds the light on is a three millimeter uh, hex? Allen, Allen wrench or hex. Uh, oh, hex it is key. hex? Yeah. And then the nut that goes on the end after the washer is a seven millimeter. Save you from digging through your toolbox and let you know which ones they are. Brad. I'm gonna go through here. Yeah, yeah. just tuck through there. through there. We'll just leave it kind of draped there. Cool. And uh, yeah, we're gonna test this one. The other one's kind of wrapped up over there, but we're gonna test this one now before we button up the, uh, the liner again. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, and actually it's really uniform. Okay, so we're calling it a night. We only got the first two rock lights mounted up in the front here because it was number one, it was getting late because we got a late start tonight. But number two, what we realized is that the pods that are gonna be in the rear and down the sides are gonna need some extensions. I didn't realize that the, the wires that come with the x -Prite kit aren't quite long enough to reach. It's gonna have to run all the way from the rear wheel well all the way to the front and then across over to the battery side. So I ordered some extensions. They're $8.99 a piece on Amazon, which I will link to the x kit in the description below, as well as these extension cables that I just ordered. I ordered four of them. I think I'm only gonna need two to three of them, but they're 10 feet long each, and I just wanted to make sure I have what I need. We should be able to wrap this up on another day, so we'll see you in a couple days. So it's actually been a couple of weeks since we started the rock light project here with Will, and now unfortunately we are on lockdown because of this uh, coronavirus quarantine stuff. So we are at home, got lots of time this week, so I wanna finish up this project. Unfortunately, Will won't be able to join us to help me finish this up. We got our extensions for the x rock lights, so now we're gonna be able to finish up this project um, what we already started doing is kind of test laying out where we want the lights to go. Because obviously we want to check them out, test them, make sure that we're going to pick a good spot that's going to give us good coverage all the way down the side of the vehicle. For now we're going to finish up wiring up the rest of the rock lights for the sides of the vehicle. So I'm going to start with the passenger side rear tire. And then what I'll do is I'll work my way down the side. That way, as I run the wires, they'll kind of all come together and run up towards the front together. I already marked up here. Let me see if I can shine the light in there. I did put a red mark up in there. That's where I want to mount this rear rock light. I'm trying to pick spots where it's going to give me good coverage throughout the wheel well and shine on the, the shocks and stuff. And also won't be in the way when the tire flexes up and down, as well as shine in people's eyes when I'm driving down the road. All right, we've decided that we need to take the fender liner out in order to mount our rock light. So we're gonna use this eight millimeter socket and we're gonna start taking this out. And there's just three along the back side here. And we're gonna try actually and just take those three out first and see if that'll give us enough room to reach up in there and mount the light. So with this loose, the liner loose, I think it's gonna give me enough room. There is some stuff up, some metal or something up right underneath there. But I think what I'll be able to do is once I mark where I want my holes, I'll be able to pull down on it while I drill through so I don't hit the metal panel underneath. Otherwise I have to take the whole fender liner off. So I'm gonna take the light and kind of hold it up where I think I want it. Let's try to mark it. So I got my two marks there. This plastic is really easy to drill through so I'm just going slow and steady. And then once I have those two holes drilled, the next step I just need to drill one for the wire to run through. Okay, so I started feeding the wire through and it's gonna come out down uh, down over here on the bottom of the fender liner and then I'll be able to run it towards the front of the vehicle. Okay, so we've got it all the way to here and now I can grab my supplied bolts and nuts and washers and run those up in there. And 
then I just need to tighten these fully down and then tuck the wire better. So then what I did, now that I got the uh, light all mounted up, is I popped this clip out, which is just one of these little plastic clips that you pop out. And then I'm just going to tuck this wire over past it so that when I put this, this clip back in, it's going to hold it the wire over further to the right here. And then all I got to do is continue running the wire down along the side here. So now that we've got the rear wheel well mounts mounted, and we've got the one wire running down basically to here, um, what I want to do is I want to get these next two mounted up. So what we basically want to do, and what we already did, is we took the next two, which are going to go somewhere kind of spaced out along the side of the gladiator here. And we already mocked it up and tested where we want them. So we kind of were going off the doors, but this one here is going to sit back just a little further behind the door, so not quite centered on the door. And what I did is I mounted it up here. There's lots of flat space kind of along the body here to mount to. Pretty simple. The only thing was I was not able to get, you have no access to behind there to put the nuts on the provided bolts. So what I did is I picked up some self-tappers. So these are the self-tappers I got. Um, they're number eight by one inch and they actually work out really perfectly because they fit right through the slots here, the hole. I've got them marked up here where I want to go. And I'm just going to grab two of these and my screw gun and uh, run them in. So for the last one I need to mount, I'm just kind of cleaning the area here. I did that on all the others as well. but. So just cleaning the area, this one I'm just going to mount up right up in here. So I'm just going to use this to kind of push it in and kind of mark, mark the spot. So really I just marked the one hole, just a little tiny dot there is all I need to get it marked. And then I can get this started right in that spot. And then with that marked, then all I got to do is take the light. And I can run that one in, and then I can use it as the mark to mark the other side. So that one kind of locks it in, and I can grab the second screw. Alright, so those two are both mounted up. Now all we got to do is run the wires as neatly as we can all the way along and up into the passenger side wheel well here. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do for running the wires is I'm gonna start in the back of the truck um, with the one in the wheel well here. And I'm gonna work it down and just, I wanna run them along the rock rail here inside, kind of tucked up high and tight up in here so that they're not gonna hang down, they're not gonna catch on stuff when we're off-roading. And I'm gonna work it down until I get to this one. When I get to this rock light here, I'll combine them and start zip tying them and electrical taping. And I'll work my way down to the one in the front. And then I'll continue from there all the way up to the front. So this isn't exciting. It's kind of slow and tedious, but pretty simple. You just want to keep things tucked up as tight and neat as you can. And uh, I'll kind of show you when we get it all wrapped up. Okay, so I've run the, the wires all the way down along to the front. So basically this is the passenger front tire and I've got the wires all the way up here to the wheel well. And what I'm gonna do is from here, it just gets fed up and you can actually kind of see some daylight up there. And I'm gonna have Kim go up on top and I'm gonna pace, basically pass the rest of these wires up and through and she'll pull them up to the top and once it's up there it's pretty much at the battery on this side so on the other side and i'll show you the other side once you come up you actually have to come across the top of the engine the one thing i do need is my two cables are plenty long but i've got one that's just short enough now where i need an extension so i'm going to have to have an extension connected here before i pull it up to get the wire fed up through here 
Um, it's a little tighter on this side because of the battery, whereas on the driver's side, there's not much up there. It's pretty wide open. So what I did is I had Kim pass a coat hanger down through alongside the battery, and I was able to electrical tape that up to the cable. And what I'm gonna have her do is slowly go ahead and start pulling it up, Kim. And just make sure it doesn't catch or snag on anything, and I'll keep feeding it up as she pulls. It'll probably get a little tight up there where the plug comes through, Kim. She got it through the first one, now keep pulling. Now you're gonna, eventually you'll get to the second one, the second connector. Got it. Okay, so your third one's in. Now you, Yep, and you're just gonna keep pulling until you get it all the way pulled through. Yep, that's it, so hang on to it right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another zip tie up in here to kind of hold everything in place to one of these other harnesses, and then we can clean everything up up top. Okay, so basically you can see I've got all eight wires here run to the battery side where the brain box is, and that's gonna get powered and grounded right here at the auxiliary switches. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda of clean everything up and connect them all so we can do a test run and make sure that everything's good before I actually button up all these wires and hide everything. This is a lot that's gonna to have to get hidden here, but uh, let me go ahead and get everything plugged in so we can give it a test out. Okay, so we're at the point we wanna test out all the lights now that we've got everything run to there. I'm a big advocate of making sure that we like test, clean. well, oh. besides clean, but I like to test everything I do on, as steps as I go and go as each one gets plugged in and checked. So before I go and clean up that whole rat's nest over there, let's go ahead and test the lights out. So why don't you go ahead and turn off the lights here in the garage and then go ahead and hit the aux four button, Kim. It's dark in here, can't see anything. You can see we've got in the front wheel well, we've got the two down the side, and then we've got the one in the rear wheel well, and we'll go around to the driver's side. Oop. Same thing, rear wheel well. That looks so good. And then underneath, and right now we've got it just on the rotating, color changing. Option. Option, yeah. Go ahead and turn the lights back on, Kim, and uh, we can proceed. The way I'm doing it is with this brain box, you've got four out of this, this plug and four out of this plug, so I'm gonna have them wired so that they're driver side and passenger side so that I'll know easily if I need to diagnose one or something goes bad, which set to go to. I'm kind of cleaning up the wires here and tucking them in. I was able to kind of squeeze the brain box in between the fuse box and the, the battery, um, which kind of holds it in there nicely. I may find a better spot for it where I can actually like mount it somewhere eventually. And one thing to be said about it being right here, having the box here and running all the wires to here, is you do end up with a lot of like cluttered wire up here. I was able to clean it up pretty nicely and it's gonna tuck away in here okay. But all you would have to do is run a power and a ground or we could potentially mount this inside like the passenger footwell. And that would get all this wire clutter out of the engine compartment and you could tuck it up behind the dash or somewhere else. So that may be something I do in the future if this gets to be kind of a pain having all this here. But uh, otherwise, for now, it is cleaning up nicely. The last thing I need to do is take these last four and connect them here to the box. And then uh, that'll pretty much wrap things up. Okay, once you've got everything wired up, connected, what you wanna do is make sure you go into your radio and go into the settings. And what you wanna do is scroll down until you get to your auxiliary switches. Now, obviously, this is for people that have the aux switches. We wired ours into aux four, so what you wanna do is choose the aux, aux switches button here, and then go to aux four, because that's the one I went to, and you have to decide if you want it to uh, be latching or momentary, which the difference between those two is latching means if you press the button and let go, it's gonna stay on. Momentary is meaning when you press the button, when you let go, it's gonna power back off. So obviously for something like lights, you want it on latching because you want it to stay on when you turn it on. 
And then you have to choose whether you want, whether the lights will be powered with just the battery or if you want it to have to have the ignition on. For these, because I'd like to show them off at a car show's events, I want them to power with the battery, um, not the ignition. So that's how I've got it set up and I'm gonna leave it that way. And uh, that's all you need to do to set up your auxiliary switches. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do is show you the RGB remote app that comes free. It's just a download whether you have Android or Apple iPhone. Once you launch the app, it's gonna to connect to the brain box using Bluetooth and it gives you all the different settings. See, I'm not connected right now, so I need to tap the Bluetooth and it connected right away. And then that gives me connectivity. So yeah. you can see I just change it to red and then green, blue, purple. So all the different color, solid colors. And then you've got the different strobe modes. And, and six white. Six is white. Yeah. Did you want okay. to see that? Yep. No, I just, well, I mean, I think it's, they're kind of, they might be watching and being like, well, what's that color? Yeah. So that's white. Cause it's um, whitish. It, it's not going to, yeah, it's not going to give you a true white um, because it is the RGB, not RGBW on these ones. But um, so it uses multiple colors to create the white. You've got the strobe modes, which you can adjust, you know, how, how fast they strobe. The intensity of the strobe. In intensity, yeah, good call. And then all sorts of different ones. You can create your own and you can even set it to music. I haven't played with that yet, but if you want to have it go to the music, you do have to import some music into the app. I'm not, I haven't played with that, so I'm not sure how that works. But also then you can just power them off from the app here. Or for us, we always leave them on here because we use the Aux, Aux 4 switch inside. That wraps up our X-Sprite Rocklight install. Um, not too hard, just a lot of time consuming, kind of tedious work running the wires and figuring out where you want to mount them for your proper placement. There may still be some adjustments that we need to make once we go off-roading. Hopefully they don't hit. Um, I don't think we'll have any problems with the side ones, but it might just be in the wheel wells. We tried to make sure of that, like we were cognizant of it, but I think until you go, you're not, you know, you're not gonna know for sure, so trial yeah. and error. And we might have to go flex it out somewhere just to test things, but overall, If we can get out of this uh, solitary confinement. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, super easy install. Uh, I think they turned out really well, and I think we've decided we're gonna we want to put some in the bed of the truck to light it up as well. But uh, we're gonna go outside. We're gonna get some glamour shots for you guys to uh, show it off in the dark and maybe get it while it's rolling. But we want to thank you so much for your support. We have just reached over 9,000 subscribers. On the road to 10K. So thank you so much. Don't forget to share, comment, like our video. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys in the next one.